The men's and women's 100 meters have been some of the top events for the United States in 2022. Not because everyone has been running super, super fast, but the competition, the head to heads, the back and forths that we've been seeing through the year has really made these events extremely competitive. Now on both sides, right, we've seen a plethora of different names who have been trading wins at various meets, not only in the US, but across the world as well. So we're just gonna be going into the USA Championships later on this week, and we're gonna be predicting our top three. So I'm gonna give you my top three the top three who is going to be making it to the world championships this year. This is my personal top three though, right? This is just my predictions, my own personal top three. Go in the comments. Let me know who you think are going to be the top three performers at the USA championships, both in the women's hundred meters and the men's hundred meter dash. So let's jump into it. We're going to start off with the women. And here, since there's no American woman who is the defending world champion, or the Diamond League champion, the top three at USA's is going to be the solid top three. No extra fourth place is gonna be going to the World Championships. We're gonna start off top to bottom. First off, I think Aaliyah Hobbs is going to get the win here. She's gonna finish first place in the 100 meters and she's gonna just edge out Shakira Richardson who I think is gonna finish second. Now, just looking at Aaliyah Hobbs season, she opened up her season with 11.06 seconds at LSU, and she finished second place at the Mount Sac meet just behind Twanisha Terry. Then consistently through the season, she won a few other races, including the Duval County meet over Brittany Brown, over Twanisha Terry, over Shakira Richardson, Mary Beth St. Price, right? She got a really strong win there. And then most recently, she got the win at the New York Grand Prix just about a week ago in the 100 meters in a season's best of 10.83 seconds. So not only is that a season's best for her, that's a 2022 US leader, and that's also a personal best for her. Personal best since about 2018 when she was in the NCAA. So these are some really strong string of performances that Aaliyah Hobbs has been putting together. So I think she's going to be able to really perform when it comes to the USA Championships later on this week. She's been dealing with some injuries over the past couple years, but I think this is gonna be her time to win that women's 100 meters. Like I noted, I think she's just going to edge out Shakira Richardson and it's gonna be very, very close. To be honest, either of them could probably take the win here. But Richardson, there were question marks about her kind of early in the season, right? Because she hadn't opened up her year until about May. But then she came through and started to hit time after time, win after win, consistent run, right? She came through in Jacksonville. She finished fourth place, uh, again, behind Aaliyah Hobbs in that rainy, kind of, kind of windy race. But she came back in the second race that they had there. She managed to win over 20 Chateri, over uh, Mary Beth St. Price. But then she got even more consistent, right? Just a week later at Prefontaine, she finished second place to Elaine Thompson Hera, but Shakira Richardson ran 10.92 seconds. Again, only finishing second place behind uh, Elaine Thompson Hera. But then she went down to her home meet Star Athletics um, Sprint Series. She managed to win in some windy times, 10.82, 10.73. Finally, at the New York City uh, Grand Prix, she finished second place to Aaliyah Hobbs, running 10.85 seconds, a season's best for her. So with all these performances, that consistency, right, that improvement through the season, I really think that Shakira Richardson is gonna be a solid lock to make the team, but she's gonna just get edged out by Hobbs. Now again, this can go back and forth. You might see Hobbs win, you might see Richardson win. I'm just predicting Shakira Richardson is gonna come second place to Aaliyah Hobbs. And I think we might see some 10 sevens if we really get some good um, weather in Eugene coming up in this week. Now, third place, this was extremely hard for me to determine. I think between the two who I'm picking, it really could be back and forth. Uh, there's really just two ladies, Twanisha Terry and Tiana Daniels. I'm not really sure. It's almost like flipping a coin between these two. But before telling you my number three pick, looking at their seasons, right? Daniels kind of had a little bit slower start to her season, right? But she's warmed up and gotten much faster as the year has gone on. She got a win out at the Bermuda Games earlier in the season, right? Um, but then overall in the year, she got fourth place at Mount Sac. She unfortunately got um, eighth place at Prefontaine, seventh place at the Star Athletic meet but she came to New York just behind Aaliyah Hobbs and Shakira Richardson she managed to run 10.99 seconds for a strong season's best with a sub 11 so that means she's entering USA's with a sub 11 performance this is a big deal because last year when she made the Olympic team she didn't run sub 11 um, going into the Olympic trials she only ran sub 11 at the semifinals of the Tokyo Olympic Games and of course she made it into finals she ran her personal best um, of 10.83 at the Prefontaine Classic after the Olympic Games but again she never ran sub 11 entering the Olympic trials last year in addition 
She is coming off some of the best string of performances at the world stage for any American women that we've seen over the past couple years. 2019, she made the 100 meter final in Doha. 2021, she made the 100 meter final in Tokyo. So Tiana Daniels, one of the most consistent athletes when we're talking about American 100 meter sprinters. Tanisha Terry, on the other hand, she is relatively new, so she doesn't have as much experience. Only finished college at USC back in 2021, uh, just last year. But she has some very strong performances, right? She got the win at the Mount Sac meet in the 100 meters against a very, very strong field. Like I said, she beat out um, Tiana Daniels there. Um, she also won the Pure Athletics meet earlier in the season in 10.94, which is her season's best. She also had great races at Prefontaine and the Star Athletics meet. And then finally, she has some really strong windy performances of 10.77 and 10.85 seconds. Now, both of these ladies, they're super consistent and extremely fast when we're talking about the best of the best. But if I could only pick a top three, right? I could only pick one of them to finish behind Hobbs and Richardson. It's really like flipping a coin, but I'm going to have to go with Twani Shateri right now. I think she's going to be able to get that third place. She might just edge out um, Tiana Daniels. But again, this is really, really close. The only reason I'm picking Twani Shateri over Daniels is because of their head-to-heads. They've raced five times, including heats and finals in 2022. And Twanisha Terry has won four out of those five races. So just going straight off of head to heads, I'm going to have to pick Twanisha Terry. But again, this is like flipping a coin. Tiana Daniels has way more experience and she's really been the more consistent 100 meter runner over the past couple years. So don't be surprised if she makes on the team. I will not ever doubt her. She's she's very much a gamer. So that's my top three. Again, Aliyah Hobbs, Shakira Richardson, Twanisha Terry, and then Tiana Daniels just coming up right behind her. But she may end up on the team. I gotta give a sleeper pick though, Shania Collins. She has run 10.98 seconds this year, which is a personal best. She graduated from Tennessee in 2018 and also ran her personal best of 10.98 back then, right? She's been dealing with some injuries since then and 2022 is really the season that she's getting back into things. Like I said, she equals her personal best of 10.98 seconds this year. She followed that up with 10.99 seconds a race um, this year as well. She has some windy times of 10.95 as well, um, right behind Richardson at the Star Athletics meet. So definitely keep an eye out for Shania Collins. I think if any of the top three or four women slip up, Shania Collins might be able to slip herself onto the US team. Now, I mentioned five ladies, but don't let this take away from any of the other top women who are really in contention here, right? You have Cambria Sturgis, you have Melissa Jefferson, Mary Beth St. Price, Brittany Brown, Jenna Prandini, Javian Oliver, right? Those are some other top contenders. And then more like a Kinison, Makai Briscoe, Tamara Clark, Tamara Davis, Cl uh, Kayla White. There are so many women who are really in contention. I think the women's 100 meters is actually one of the, um, kind of one of the top open events that you could see someone slip into the top three. So keep a lookout for all these women. They all have a strong chance to make that women's 100 meter team to the world championships later on this summer. Now, next up, let's talk about the men's. Now, Christian Coleman is the world champion from 2019. He's a defending world champion. So he has the wild card to the Eugene World Championships this year. So ultimately where he places um, at the, in the 100 meter final doesn't really matter that much since his placing is not gonna affect anyone else. There's still three guys who get a chance to go to the world championships. And then Coleman is of course gonna be leading them as that fourth defending champion. Now, just like the women, let's start off with the top. I'm gonna go with Trayvon Bromel to win the US championships here in the 100 meters. Really, it's hard to pick against him and I think he's gonna get a comfortable win as well. Just looking at his season, the only real hiccup that he has in 2022 is that false start in Birmingham. So who knows, he may have gone on to run a very great race there and he likely would have won that race. But outside of that, he is completely undefeated. Early on in the season, he opened up with a windy 9.75 seconds, only plus 2.1 meter per second win, so very strong performance there. He also won in Puerto Rico in 9.92. He won Prefontaine, a very strong field in 9.93, right? And both of those past races, Puerto Rico and Prefontaine, those were into a slight headwind. So Trayvon Bromel, really, really consistent, and he's been beating everyone relevant from Christian Coleman to Fred Curley. I think he's gonna get the win here at USA's. He's He won the US trials last year at the Olympic trials, and this is just USA's. When we get to the world championships, he's I think he's gonna make the team, but we'll talk about what's gonna happen when uh, we're talking about the top three at world championships. But I think Trayvon Mamel, he's gonna be a solid pick to win USA's and make that team two worlds. Now, right behind Trayvon Bromel, I think Fred Curley is gonna comfortably get second place. Though I wouldn't be surprised to see him win this race as well, but I think he's gonna get that second place. Very much like Bromel, 
Curly's races have all been sub 10 seconds this year. 9.99 season opener, 9.92 in Kenya, 9.98 in Prefontaine, and then 9.92 in Rome. He has been very great. He got second place at the Olympics last year. He's a Diamond League champion last year as well. Since the Olympic Games, he has never finished lower than second place in any of his 100 meter races. So that consistency is unmatched. Uh, Fred Curley is probably the best all-around sprinter at one, two, and 400 meters. He is definitely one who, you know, he knows how to perform. He is a gamer, so I'm picking him to finish second place just behind Trayvon Bramell in this 100 meters. Now, for third place, I think Christian Coleman is ultimately just going to finish off right behind Fred Curley and Trayvon Bramell. But like I noted earlier, he has a wild card, so it really doesn't matter that much. But compared to these other two, he's been a little less consistent. He hasn't raced as much as well, but he did win the N uh, the New York City Grand Prix, a really close race with Akeem uh, Blake, but he got it in a season's best of 9.92 seconds. Aside from Prefontaine and the New York City uh, Grand Prix, he's also raced in Tokyo, the Tokyo Grand Prix in 10.09 seconds. But at Prefontaine, he finished uh, third place behind Trayvon Bramell and Fred Curley. So though I think he'll finish third here, it's really pretty much irrelevant, right? His goal is the world championships. He's a defending champion. That's all he has to worry about. He's going to be trying to defend his championship gold medal in Eugene later on this summer. So I think he's going to finish third here. But just behind Coleman, the next person, the last person who I think is going to make this team might be surprised. But I'm picking Makai Williams from Oregon to make the U.S. team to the World Championships this year. Now, he didn't have a good race at the NCAAs in the 100-meter final, but that's really an outlier relative to the rest of his season, right? Of course, he finished seventh place there, but look at the rest of his entire season. He's been extremely consistent. He ran a personal best of 9.86 seconds this year. He ran 9.93 at the Pac-12 Championships. He also has multiple 10-0 races, so he's been very, very consistent in the 10-0 and sub 10 second range, right? Um, and don't forget that he won the 100 meters at the Mount Sac meet against a very strong field of pro uh, professional athletes, right? So Makai Williams, he made the Olympic team last year in the relay when he finished fifth place at the Olympic trials. Guess what? He only finished fifth place behind Trayvon Bramell, um, Kenny Benaric, Fred Curley, and Ronnie Baker. So he has that experience of finishing ahead of some top guys. Don't let that one NCAA race set him back from what he's capable of doing. I think Makai Williams is going to grab that spot to make the U.S. team in the 100 meters. Finally, I think my sleeper pick here, just behind Trayvon Bramell, just behind Fred Curley, behind Coleman, and behind uh, Makai Williams, Marvin Bracey in the 100. I think he's going to be that sleeper pick. Now, he very well could be in that top mix, but I think he's going to be a sleeper. Might just miss a team, but I think he's going to be able to, you know, kind of be a sleeper here. He has a season's best of 10.03 seconds. Last year, despite his injuries, he really had a strong season, running 9.85 seconds on two occasions through the season. Um, but in addition, his legal best of 10.03 came at the New York Grand Grand Prix this year, just behind Christian Coleman and Akeem Blake from Jamaica, but he's also run windy times of 10.91 seconds and 10.80 seconds down in Florida at the Star Athletics meet just earlier in June. He of course got the bronze medal at the World Indoor Championships and he made the 2016 Olympic team. So Marvin Bracey has that experience and he could very well get on that team. So couple other guys to note, just like the women, there are a plethora of guys who are really in the mix here. Kyrie King, Crivon Charleston, Elijah Hall, Mike Rogers, Kenny Benaric, Isaiah Young, right, uh, Chris Belcher. There's so many guys who really could sneak onto the team. And I think, again, just like the women, this is relatively open when we're talking about maybe that third spot. So keep a lookout for all those guys. But I think my top three, Trayvon Bramell, Fred Curley, of course, Christian Coleman already has a wild card there, but Makai Williams is gonna get that final spot for the men. So those are my top three on the women's side and the men's side. But again, these are just my personal picks. Let me know who you think are going to get top three on both the men's and the women's 100 meter dash. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more content coming and a lot more in not only the next couple weeks, but down in the next couple months. A lot of stuff is coming, a lot of stuff planned. So keep tuning in and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.